Our world is a world of water. The oceans cover 71% of the surface of the Earth and provide us with the oxygen we need for every two breaths we take. Much of this life is threatened by the actions of the planet's top predator, man. Pollution, climate change, and intensive overfishing threatens a significant amount of the life in our seas. It also puts at risk the livelihoods of those who work at sea, those who enjoy its spoils, and those that rely heavily on marine life to survive. Individuals and groups who document and study the marine environment may find that many of these wonderful creatures become lost. It may be the case that much of the marine life we see today is lost to history. And as the seas continue to change, we may find that much of the life around us can only ever be seen through a screen. Humanity has enjoyed a long and fruitful relationship with the sea for many thousands of years. And for nearly all of human history, there has been enough fish in the sea to feed us all. As technology developed in the 20th century, fishing vessels could catch more fish in more places than ever before. Today these developments continue, and we have a global fishing industry worth nearly $250 billion per year. In a world where one in seven of us rely directly on fish to survive, increasing global population, squeezes on resources and increased consumption, raises the question, can we continue to exploit the sea without changing it forever? The pattern of depleting large and predatory fish from our oceans is something that has been observed across the world. And when predator numbers are reduced in an area, this can significantly alter food web dynamics. Scientists have expressed that we need to protect between 20 and 30% of all marine habitats across the world to the highest degree, and political targets in 2006 aimed to protect 10% of the world's oceans by 2010. Today, in 2015, less than 3% of the world's oceans have any type of protection, and less than 1% to the highest degree. One contributing factor to why we seem to be missing both scientific and political targets is pressure from the fishing industry. In addition to habitat destruction and, and over-harvest, climate change is one of the major threats to ocean ecosystems all over the world. And we see increases in sea level and increased storms, but we also see something unique not seen on land in the oceans, that's ocean acidification. All the species of the oceans are in coral reefs. That makes them by far, by a long, long way, the most diverse habitats in the oceans. When reefs evolved, 500 million years ago, they created structures, providing habitats and food for other organisms, and life exploded in diversity. We are changing the environment very, very quickly. And what we're doing is converting hundreds of millions of years of accumulation of fossil fuel, burning them in such a way that they are being turned into carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is ultimately absorbed by the oceans as an acid. When it is absorbed by the ocean, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere reacts with water molecules to form a dilute acid, and this acid reacts with carbonate molecules, turning them into bicarb. And that destroys the carbonates in the ocean surface, and that changes the capacity of corals to build skeletons. There is a real chance that ocean acidification, if it continues on the track that it is now, that coral-dominated reef systems like the Great Barrier Reef will soon disappear. And of course, if the reef disappears, then the habitat for over a million species will also disappear as well. At a global scale, losing coral reefs has implications for over 500 million people who depend on coral reefs each day for their food and income. There are also alarming signs that plankton, that is responsible for 50% of the oxygen we breathe, and for the vast food chains in our polar oceans, are beginning to struggle to make their delicate calcium carbonate skeletons. 
as the carbon and iron concentrations of these oceans decrease. We have documented that plankton levels are declining on a global scale in eight out of ten large ocean ecosystems. The only thing we can do which will control ocean acidification is to stop burning fossil fuels. By low oxygen areas, we mean those areas of the ocean where oxygen is so low that some fish are starting to have trouble breathing. And that means in practice that they sometimes have to escape to other areas where there's more oxygen. There can be a loss of habitat for fish. So some areas that were once good for living are no longer good for them to live in and they have to ocean go away. Now number about 400. The major man-made cause is agricultural runoff from rivers into the ocean. In addition, winds and currents move nutrient-rich but oxygen-poor water from the deep ocean to the coast. Microscopic organisms called phytoplankton thrive but then die, decompose, and the cycle continues. Climate change may also come into play. Some of the impacts we have started to study for cod range from swimming ability, when there's less oxygen, fish tend to swim less fast. There's also the issue of growth. Uh, some oxygen concentrations are not necessarily lethal in the sense that they will not kill the cod, but they can nevertheless have an effect on the growth. A cod that is three years old with low oxygen will be smaller than one that has lots of oxygen. Coastal development, aquaculture, marine traffic, seafloor mining, coastal reef degradation, and marine energy development are all increasing. Some of this marine development is necessary in an overcrowded world, but we actually have the chance in the oceans to proactively guide the hand of this development more intelligent than we did on land, so that it doesn't recklessly knock out marine species and damage the habitats upon which they depend. One of the most stunning things we did on land was to protect big areas like Yellowstone, uh, whole ecosystems and the organisms that lived inside. And that's been an approach that's been taken in the ocean as well, protecting parts of the sea with all the organisms that live inside as a way of preserving their biodiversity, but also as a way of preserving their ecological function. Rhythm 52.